Hi everybody. In today's video presentation, I will talk about an RMA flow for a dropship transaction. To begin with, first let me explain a little bit about a dropship transaction. See, uh, many a times uh, we we have a requirement where a customer is place an order with us for an item which we no longer uh, maintain in our inventory. So in such a case, we raise a purchase order with a one of our vendor. In the vendor, ship the product directly to the customer, send us a Oracle payable invoice. So on the order management side, as soon as we vendor inform us that he has directly shipped the product to the customer, we do a logical receiving transaction in our logical inventory and then progress the workflow for the invoicing and then send the invoice to the customer. So let's, so this is the uh, uh, high level dropship flow. If you need a more detailed information about the dropship flow, please refer my blog eoracleapps.blogspot.com for the additional information. So let's uh, talk about the RMA flow for the dropship transactions. Here I have uh, listed all the steps and process that we need to follow if we want to do an RMA flow for a dropship transaction. So first thing is setup. The based on the business need, only setup required in RMA with a dropship flow is selection of what type of workflow we want to use and then assign the workflow to the transaction type. Here what I'm saying is like Oracle has a lot of seeded workflow for a RMA. So Pick which workflow you want to use and then assign that workflow to your RMA transaction. There is a possibility that you already have a RMA workflow associated with our transactions. And if you want to use that RMA flow, then no setup is required at all. Excuse me, just a second. So second step is CD workflow. As I just explained, we have a lot of RMA flows, seeded by uh, seeded workflow shipped with the product. So there is a possibility that any of the CD workflow will fulfill your uh, uh, requirement for the dropship and it is already associated with the transactions. So in that case, only thing we have to do is use that transaction while doing RMA flow for a dropship. But if you have a specific business need, which is not fulfilled by the CD RMA workflow, then you have to customize the workflow as per your need. Third step is understand the business need. If business has no physical contact with a return item that are shipped directly to supplier by end customer, then if you have a receiving activity in the workflow, the receiving activity will enable you or organization to track the return for accounting purpose. So in that case, seeding, seeded RMA flow with the receiving activity work fine. But if business choose not to account for the return item in the inventory, in that case, we need not to include the receiving activity in your order flow. So again, we have a seeded workflow which we can use. So we can use line flow return for the credit only or any other RMA flow without a receiving activity. So what I'm saying here is if you want to record the receiving activity for the accounting purpose, then use any ordinary RMA flow with the receipt and credit. But if you don't want to record the receiving activity, you can use a flow which are similar to line flow return for the credit only, as you can see here. In the this workflow, I don't have any receiving activity. Let's uh, move to the next activity. Also, we need to understand if business has a requirement to add any approval process for the RMA with the dropship. In that case, we again have a CD workflow, which is line flow return with the receipt and approval, no credit, a return for credit only with the approval, a return for credit with the receipt and approval. So as you can see, I have listed two workflow 
where we have a uh, approval activity. So you can use any of these CD. See the first workflow, as you can see, it has a wait for approval, but there is a no receiving activity. Second workflow has a wait for approval and it has a receiving activity. Uh, this is for uh, if you want to have a approval for the approval process for a RMA flow for the dropship. Again, approval can be derived using the CD, pro CD process or we can customize the approval sub process and drive the approval hierarchy from the local AME engine. If you want to know more about AME engine, please refer my post about AME engine. So this is for this part. The rest of the stuff on RME flow for the dropship, I will continue in the next recording. And thank you.